So I'm building this cybersecurity research thing. I'm not even going to call it a SaaS yet because I'm not even 100% sure that I'm going to like release it as a web application or what I'm going to do with it. I'm just kind of going with the flow. We'll just kind of see what happens with it. But the core of it is building a honeypot. And what a honeypot is, is it is a web server that intentionally looks vulnerable so that attackers will try to attack it and you can get information about how they're attacking it, what they're doing, different things like that. Like I said, I don't really know what I'm going to do with this. I'm just going to kind of play with it, see, you know, kind of what falls out of whatever I build. I wanted to build a very dead simple proof of concept. And we're talking about something that's so simple, it came from a singular Claude prompt. That was the code that ended up coming out and creating this article that I'm going to kind of read from. Um, so essentially all it really is, is it sets up a fake HTTP server and a fake HTTPS server and it waits. And then when somebody sends a request to that HTTP or HTTPS server, or the ports that are open, kind of mimicking that server, it will report what they were looking for and what the request was like. You know, so what URL was hit, what data was sent, where the data came from, etc. We're talking like, I think it was like 60 lines of code, total Golang code. Um, so it was dead, dead simple. And the whole purpose of it was A, I wanted to see how long it takes after spinning up the simplest possible web server with no domain, without advertising the IP anywhere, how long it takes for an automated scanner to hit my server. So let's back up for a second. What do I mean by automated scanner? Something that folks don't realize unless they've been kind of looking at their logs on their web server is that at all times you are getting hit with vulnerability scanners and crawlers and scrapers. And all they're really doing is blasting requests out to the entire internet, trying to find devices or servers that are vulnerable to very well-known vulnerabilities. So things that they can use to drop malware on a server, exploit that server, pull data out of it, crypto mine on it, different things like that. So these are usually very, very simple scanners. They're not doing anything super complex and really like the end result of these things is normally you just get like a version of that malware dropped on your server and then your server is going to start sending out those requests. You'll probably get a crypto miner. That's what happens a lot of times. And sometimes if you're running a database that's vulnerable, they'll yoink all the data out of it. And that's obviously not good. Um, so this stuff can be pretty bad, but it's typically not incredibly advanced, which you'll kind of see here in a second. One of the, you know, scanners that ended up hitting my web server was just looking for a very, very dead simple vulnerability in a CMS service that's used by, you know, Chinese folks on WordPress. Um, so what I was looking for was how long does it take on average for one of these web, one of these web crawlers or vulnerability scanners to hit a web server that has just gone up. I plop this code down on a Hetzner um, $5 VPS, and here are the results. This article I wrote on Twitter, I will link it below, um, but I did kind of want to have like some of the results up in front of me so I didn't like forget stuff. Um, let's see, so the result was uh, just over four and a half minutes, let's see. So I ran the test five times. So basically I spun up this web server, these two ports and kept them open five times. And I averaged the you know, amount of time that it took for you know, the web server to get hit. One of the results was like nine seconds. I spun up the web server and nine seconds later, I got a hit. Um, but I averaged them out and it was just over four and a half minutes. Um, so that's pretty damn quick, especially since again, this domain was not anywhere. There was no domain. There's no domain at all. It was literally just a raw IPv4 address that got hit. Um, I go a little bit more in depth about some of the traffic, um, specifically like this Chinese CMS. The CVE was from 2016, so it's like a nine-year-old CVE um, in a CMS service that's used primarily on like Chinese language WordPress sites. So not something that you're very likely to be vulnerable to, but apparently there are enough WordPress sites that are vulnerable to it that, you know, they're scanning for it and they're probably getting hit. So they're probably dropping crypto miners and stuff like that on these servers. Um, so what comes next after this? That's where things get interesting. What I'm building out now is a more fleshed out version of that. So I want to take all of the requests 
from all of the scrapers and all of the vulnerability scanners. I guess I can switch back to face record, um, professional YouTuber. I want to take all of these requests and log them in a database so that I can start looking for patterns. The easy kind of example is this CVE that I saw. The reason why I knew it was tied to that CVE is I literally just searched for the URL that the um, scanner was trying to hit and it immediately went back to the CVE article from like 2016 talking about this specific CVE um, or the specific vulnerability in this you know web server or, or this WordPress plugin. Um, so that was pretty easy. So if I can find these patterns, I can get a feel for, okay, we've got a billion hits on this specific URI pattern. That means that there's a ton of scanners that are looking for this specific vulnerability. That's kind of valuable to know, or at least it's cool to know, to know that like this specific vulnerability is very, very highly exploited. Um, after that, we can start doing some real fun stuff. So let's say I've got the CVE that I know for a fact is very commonly exploited. I can create logic within my code where if I detect that a scanner is trying to exploit this vulnerability, I can emulate what a vulnerable web server would say back to that request, and we can see what this scanner is actually trying to do. So if I tell this scanner like, hey, you're looking for this vulnerability, here is the result of you looking for that vulnerability and it makes it look like my server is vulnerable to it. So after that, it's going to try to actually drop a payload or it's going to try to continue exploiting that vulnerability. And we can actually get the malware that they're trying to drop or we can figure out what it is that they're trying to do with this vulnerability scanner. Sometimes this is just really shitty little like cybersecurity researchers who are doing like mass scans on the internet. I hate you people if you're the ones that are doing that. That's really lame. But most of the time, it's going to be actually malicious actors who are probably trying to drop crypto, man, uh, crypto miners because that's what everybody's doing. Um, and it's a quick and easy way to make a couple bucks. Um, so that's, that's going to be the next step is the actual like vulnerability emulation to try to start getting payloads. That's kind of complicated because every vulnerability is going to answer in a different way. And I don't really want to set up actually vulnerable software on these servers because then you actually kind of start getting into trouble where like you're actually hosting malware that is doing crypto mining or is you know scanning out for other vulnerable servers and you don't really want to do that i want to emulate it so that i can start pulling payloads and figuring out stuff after that tons of really cool stuff we can do we're going to start actually messing with some of these scanners seeing if we can get them shut down or seeing if we can confuse them that would be a blast but for now i'm going to set it up to where it starts logging the behavior so that we can start looking at that data and seeing what is going to, you know, kind of happen if these vulnerabilities are actually exploited the way they want them to. So that is the next step in this fun little honeypot server network setup. After that, I really want to do IoT stuff and start setting up like servers that emulate vulnerable IoT devices. I think that would be really cool because there's some really cool stuff going on there that people aren't researching. Yeah. That's about it. Let me know what you think about this project in the comments. I think it's kind of cool. I don't even know how I'm going to make money off of it. I probably am not going to make money off of it. It might just be something I just publish about. But yeah, that's about it. Take it easy. Peace.